This video goes over how to write the standard form of an equation of ellipses not centered at the origin. Ellipse with center h comma k. We are able to translate the graph of an ellipse both horizontally and vertically in the Cartesian coordinate plane. The horizontal move is denoted by the letter h and the vertical move is denoted by the letter k. This gives us an ellipse centered at h comma k. Remembering here that we're referring to an xy coordinate pair. h is in the x value and k is in the y value. When we translate a graph, it results in a new form of the standard equation. The new form of the standard equation of an ellipse centered at h k with a major axis parallel to the x-axis is the quantity x minus h squared all over a squared plus the quantity y minus k squared all over b squared equals 1, where a is greater than b, the length of the major axis is 2a, the coordinates of the vertices are h plus or minus a comma k. The length of the minor axis is 2b. The coordinates of the covertices are h comma k plus or minus b. And the coordinates of the foci are h plus or minus c comma k, where c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Similarly, the standard form of an ellipse centered at hk with a major axis parallel to the y-axis is the quantity x minus h squared all over b squared plus the quantity y minus k squared all over a squared equal to 1, where a is greater than b, the length of the major axis is 2a, the coordinates of the vertices are h comma k plus or minus a, the length of the minor axis is 2b, the coordinates of the covertices are h plus or minus b comma k, and the coordinates of the foci are h comma k plus or minus c, where c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Take a look at some images of ellipses centered at h k. Here on the left, we have an ellipse centered at the point hk, some generic point. We can see that the major axis is horizontal and that the minor axis is vertical. And on the right, we have an ellipse major axis vertical, minor horizontal, and that same point hk just again noticing the different shape these ellipses take when they are horizontal versus vertical. Moving on to an example. Write the equation of an ellipse that has vertices negative 2 comma negative 8 and negative 2 comma 2 and foci negative 2 comma negative 7 and negative 2 comma 1. Step 1. Where does the major axis lie? Notice the x-coordinates of the vertices are the same, negative 2 in both cases. Therefore, the major axis is parallel to the y-axis. This means the equation will have the form x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. Next, we must identify the center. The center is halfway between the vertices. We apply the midpoint formula. Remembering the midpoint formula is first x-coordinate plus second all over 2, first y-coordinate plus second all over 2 to get the midpoint. So looking at our two vertices, which are negative 2, negative 8, 
and negative 2, 2. Our x value for x1 and x2 are the same, which gives us negative 2 plus negative 2 all over 2. Our y value is negative 8 plus 2 all over 2 simplifies to negative 2 comma 3. That is our h, k. We now know our h and our k values for our equation. Step 3. Determine the value of a squared. The length of the major axis is 2a and is bounded by the vertices. Therefore, 2a equals my second y-coordinate minus my first, bounded by the vertices. That's going to be 2 for our second y-coordinate and negative 8 for our first. So we set 2a equal to 2 minus negative 8, which is the same as 2 plus 8, which gives us 10. Dividing both sides by 2 gives us a equal to 5, and a squared equals 25. Step 4. Determine the value of c squared. The foci are given by h comma k plus c. Remember, we found the center to be the point negative 2, negative 3. We can use that h and k to fill in values for this foci. Knowing that the foci are given by h comma k plus or minus c in this ellipse, we can break that down into two different parts. We have the h comma k plus c equal to negative 2, negative 7. That's our first focus point. We have h comma k minus c equal to negative 2 comma 1, our second focus point here. We can choose either one of those to solve for the value of c. Let's just pick h comma k plus c. I already know h, all I need to know is k plus c. That is equal to negative 7 from here. So we have k plus c equals negative 7. I know the value of k is negative 3 from my center, so here's that negative 3. Just do the algebra. Negative 3 plus c equals negative 7. c is 4, and therefore c squared is 16. Step 5. Determine the value of b squared using c squared equals a squared minus b squared, true for every type of ellipse c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Well, we found c squared to be 16. We found a squared to be 25. So we rewrite this to solve for b squared. 16 equals 25 minus b squared. We'll do a plus b squared, giving me 16 plus b squared equals 25. Move that 16 b squared equals 25 minus 16, which gives me 9. My sixth and final step are to substitute the values that I found for h, k, a squared, and b squared into the equation and simplify if needed. I know that h is negative 2, k is negative 3, a squared is 25, and b squared is 9. Noticing that I can simplify in my numerator, x minus negative 2 gives me x plus 2, y minus negative 3 gives me y plus 3, and here is my final simplified version of that equation.